morning as I'm ready theorem. Um, uh, so, uh, I will, okay, I will repeat. Um, so if you have a, uh, so Sam Reddy theorem says, if you have a finite set of, uh, okay, it's, it's infinite. So if A is an infinite set of positive density, which means if you look at the uh, limit of supremum of A intersect the um, uh, uh, first an element, and then you look at the proportion of how many of them are there uh, over N, then it's uh, there is constant that uh, this uh, limit is bigger than zero. Then um, the conclusion is A contains infinitely many arithmetic progression of length k for any k, and it has a f uh, equivalent finitely finite reversion which says for every k and delta, so there is n such that every subset. For uh, uh, of one, two, three, and of uh, and until n of size at least a uh, delta proportion of n will contain an arithmetic progression of length k. So uh, the finite reversion is pretty uh, in the sense of um, um, measure or counting theoretic. Of course, the yeah the infinite version is also so you you look at the counting, uh, uh, you count how many this uh, set intersect the uh, uh, initial segment of, uh, finite segment of the uh, natural numbers, and then you look at the proportion of um, uh, how big it is. Mm. And um, there are some other, um, so it, uh, uh, another motivation is from the, graph theory, and there is a famous Eilish Heiner conjecture says, if you have finite graph and um, H, and then, uh, uh, and then for any, uh, so there is a positive constant C and um, there are two constants C and R and C, uh, such, such that uh, if you take a vertex, uh, n vertex graph G, which does not have H as an induced sub subgraph, uh, they are called H free graphs, then G has either a click or independent set of very large size, um, uh, which is uh, a constant times uh, n is the size of vertex, uh, vertices and um, to, to raise to the power of RH. Okay, I should say, yeah, yeah, RH uh, is positive. So there is a very big proportion of uh, the graph is homogeneous. So it ha has, uh, it is either a click, which means everything is con uh, connect to everything else, and, um, or it's an independent set, which says uh, everything is not connect to anything else. Is it clear? Sorry? IH, does IH depend on N or? Yeah, I, RH depends on H only, but it doesn't depend on N. And N is one vertex uh, graph, it is a click or independent set. So you can use RH and make it very small. That is trivial. But if it is the main thing, then RH is the same as H. But it is not the same as H. Is it clear? Yes, it is clear. 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 
，所以现在嗯、呃，这个 conjecture 现在是还是 wildly open 的，就是他们做图论的有一个一个在看这个成不成立，好像已经算到五个 vertex 的 graphs， 然后四个的肯定是都是对的，就是他们一个一个列出来，然后五个的就有一个还是两个就证不出来是不是对的。呃，反正是一个可能，应该是一个很难的 conjecture， 啊、呃，然后它有一个，嗯、um, ，generalization， 呃、uh, ，so， 嗯、um, ，instead of one age free， so this is age free， so it um um avoids one uh subgraph as induced graph， you can consider uh a graph that um avoid a finite set of graphs as induced graphs。And、uh, so there are some theorems about this.、Um, maybe, yeah, maybe we will talk about it later. Okay.、Um, so,、um, so what model theory can say about them?、Um, so the main、uh, theme of the talk is uh, about. Um, so these two um, examples. Um, Gives two uh, uh gave two um examples of behaviors of different like counting, um so this one is like really, um so this data n is kind of uh you have positive measure, and this n to the power of i which is kind of positive dimension, so uh you we will see later that uh we will define uh they corresponds to two different counting dimensions. And、uh, so, so we would define them.、Uh, these dimensions are defined by Hushovsky, and I think his idea is、um, by looking at the dimension, then you can thought of think of the geometry、uh, behind them. And then, you, if these structures lives in very nice structures that we understand where, like the complex numbers, the uh, uh, natural number. No, Okay, the integers or the、uh, real closed fields.、Um, then we can, and and there are a bunch of、uh, other dimensions are、uh, in these、uh, structures. For example, algebraic dimensions,、um, the natural algebraic dimension, or minimal dimensions, or Morley rank, or these kind of things. And then、uh, we can、um, we can uh, yeah. Uh, uh, We can using the other dimensions comes from model theory or geometry to、uh, to understand、uh, the dimensions, the counting dimensions, and then we get、uh, if we translate back to 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 the finite finite、um, cases, then we can say really about the asymptotic behavior of these sets that we want to understand.、Um, okay. Um, so, because we were working um, in um, ultra products,、uh, so let me talk a little bit about non-standard rears. I think you've also seen it in this morning's talk.、Um, so,、uh, yeah, it's a yeah. So it's a concrete example of non-standard rears.、Um, I think there are others.、Um, yep, yeah. But when I Kind of read papers in、um, non-standard combinatorics. It's it's kind of helpful if you think of them as actual powers because it's a very concrete.、Um, so you have the、uh, rear is an arrears is an ordered uh, uh, field, and then you take、uh, a non-principal actual field to you, and then you take the actual Power of R, and then、uh, this R star is a non-standard、uh, real.、Uh, so the reals、uh, embed into R star by just taking,、um, sending an element to the constant function that、uh, in each i component it sends R i to R. And、uh, it's called non-standard because it contains a lot of other elements,、um, 
um, other than these uh, rears. Uh, so there is a so there are infinitesimals, um, which is defined. So there are like elements that are positive and are small, strictly smaller than one over n for n. And um, so, for example, we can just define alpha as uh, sending the ith component to one over i plus one. Then you can see uh, you can check the definition easily. But in years, if you have this kind of elements that it's, it's always it's always zero uh, but in the non-standard rears um, there are a lot of um, other elements uh, uh, it, yeah there are a lot of uh, these such such elements so they are called uh, infinitesimals um, so uh, let's uh, is curly E to be the collection of all, all of such uh, infinitesimals, then it, it is actually an additive subgroup of uh, R star. And uh, R star is now Archimedean. So it has a lot of Archimedean components. Uh, it has um, um, infinitely large elements. Uh, for example, you can, uh, you can um, uh, define B as, um, uh, for each bi, you send it to i, uh, and then of uh, any yeah, it will be not in the Archimedean component that generated by r. And there is a standard part map that um, where we can define is um, from r star to the rules and uh, uh, with the uh, um, plus minus infinity. Uh, so it will be defined if it's um, bigger than n for every n, then it's infinite, or if it's smaller than minus n for every n, then it's minus infinite. Otherwise, um, uh, it's defined as this, so it's supreme of the uh, rears that are uh, smaller than alpha. Um, and actually, it will imply that alpha is in in the uh, uh, so R is a standard rear, and then around it there is a uh, infinitesimal elements that are very close to it, infinitely close to it, and uh, all these elements will be uh, sent to R as well. Uh, is it clear? Okay, I will go on. And, um, and now we will define through the finite counting dimensions. So it was um, developed in a series of papers. Uh, so it was first originated, I think, um, uh, in a paper with uh, Wagner. Uh, uh, so Huchowski uh, with Wagner. And uh, so it's actually about some um, estimate, uh, so it, yeah, it's about less than pink inequality, uh, which is an estimate of um, what a arbitrary subgroup can, inter so how many elements an arbitrary subgroup in a, a finite group can intersect uh, algebraic set. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then uh, it was uh, generalized in other papers by Hushovsky. Mm. So, uh, okay, so these are still definitions. So we fix an outer product uh, of uh, M. And then on the other hand, we fix an um, uh, non standard rears over the same uh, outer filter. Um, and then we say uh, set uh, a subset uh, in uh, M uh, to the power N is called internal if X is an actual product of uh, subsets of uh, uh, each uh, component MI. And then uh, we uh, denote internal set of M to be the collection of all, in, uh, uh, int M to be the collection of all internal sets in M. 
and uh, most subsets of M are not internal. For example, the infinitesimal as a set is not internal. Uh, or you can take the convex hull of uh, the rears, it's still not internal. But all definable sets are internal because um, definable sets can be seen as uh, you look at by Walsh, uh, Walsh theorem, you can look at, uh, you can think of them as uh, arch product of uh, the definable set in each component. And uh, now, so we will fix a convex subgroup C of uh, the non-standard rears um, in the additive subgroup, and it contains um, R. And then we look at the, um, the quotient group. Um, R star quotient C. And uh, it still has the additive structure and also in, it inherits the order, less than or equal. And the definition of the counting dimension delta C is defined as um, uh, defined on or internal, uh, interpret, yeah, internal sets of M to, uh, uh, to this quotient group. Uh, um, union the plus minus infinity defined as, so if you have an internal set X and then delta C of X is defined as the, the log of size of X and plus C. So this is, um, plus C is just the bake it to be inside this quotient uh, subgroup, or the quotient group. And uh, yeah, and yeah, uh, the size of X is just the non-standard size of X. So you can look at it as, because X is internal, so you can look at it as a, a arch product of X, XI, and then you look at the size of XI. Of course, XI can be infinite. Uh, and then if it is infinite, then it's, uh, you just get infinite. So it makes sense, uh, yeah, uh, but if XI is, almost everywhere finite, then it's well defined. It's something in R star. And when, uh, yeah, when uh, the set is empty, then it gets minus infinite. Um, any question? Um, yeah, so this definition is kind of very, uh, so do you have a question or, okay, I, I'll just go on. So this definition is just, uh, is kind of, um, a very abstract, uh, but, uh, we will see later, um, two examples that are uh, very useful of delta C, and um, we we're mainly focused on these two dimensions. Um, okay, the general properties of this uh, delta C. So it, uh, the idea is like it really behaves like dimensions. So it gives finite set uh, dimension zero because uh, in, the, in our choice, we, we make C contains uh, the standard rules. And uh, if X is in, uh, contained in Y, then uh, the dimension of X is less than of dimension of Y. And if you have a union, then the dimension is just the maximum of the components. And if you have product, then it's, uh, the dimension is the, uh, the sum of uh, each component of the product. And uh, yeah, this uh, sub-additivity is um, very useful. So if you have an um, internal function f from x to y, and if every fiber um, uh, pre-image of um, y, uh, an element y has dimension less than or equal to alpha, and the dimension of y is less than or equal to beta, then the dimension of x is bounded um, by alpha plus beta. So it's all very 
um, intuitive and uh, the definition, yeah, it's, it, the proof is just from the definition because we take, if you remember, we take the logarithm of the size of X. So for example, if you have uh, the pro Cartesian product, then, um, then the size will become the product and the log logarithm will make it to be uh, uh, the make it to be additive so it's uh, uh, something plus something um, okay um, so so the so so because we fix a convex subgroup c and uh, so the idea is uh, different convex subgroups of these um, non-standard rears will give different dimensions with respect to uh, different degree of graininess. graininess. So um, if you take a smaller convex subgroup C1 compared to the convex subgroup C2, then the counting dimension you get for C1 is finer than uh, C, uh, the counting dimension you get from C2, uh, which means if C1 thinks X and Y has the same dimension, then C2 must also think they have the same dimension. So C1 can detect more dimensions. Um, so, so these dimensions can distinguish uh, the non-standard size of uh, pseudo-finite sets. So the finite here, I mean uh, internal sets uh, such that each xi is infinite, uh, is finite. And uh, so this is a way to detect dimension in discrete setting. So it's like um, a geometric way to uh, to do. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. So there are um, quite a lot of uh, applications in additive computatorics using this strategy. So it's kind of a geometric way to do some additive computatorics. Uh, questions? Or I will go on. <laughs> 好吧,我继续. Um, so let me uh, discuss um, two examples of these counting dimensions. Uh, the first one is called phi dimension. So it's the finest one, so it's called phi dimension. Um, so you take the smallest possible um, convex subgroup C, uh, which is the convex hole of the rears. Uh, you can define it as uh, this. So you take the non-standard um, interval between minus n and n, and then you take the union over all n. Um, and the fine dimension is defined as the uh, delta with respect to this uh, convex uh, subgroup. And what this dimension uh, sees uh, is, uh, so if X and Y has the same phi dimension, if only if there's some constant C, such that the size of X over the size of Y is bounded by um, C and uh, above by C and below by one over C. So it's similar to X's uh, the size of x is big O of y and the size of y is big O of x. Yeah, so if you think of x as a, a function um, of xi, and, and this, yes, yeah, this is a sequence of uh, size of x i, and this is a sequence of size of y, and asymptotically, x, the size of x will be bounded by c times the size of y, and uh, same for y. And um, so 
fine dimension has a characteristic feature, which is um, for any dimension in, yeah, so for any value in this um, quotient group, uh, there is a real valued measure, mu alpha, uh, such that it, um, it is, a f yeah, it is uh, also related to this dimension. Um, so if mu alpha of x is zero, then the dimension drops. And if mu alpha of x is infinite, then the dimension goes up. Um, and if two sets x and y has the same dimension alpha, then you, uh, so, and then mu alpha x is, uh, yeah, the standard part of the counting measure, yeah, the standard part of the size of x over the size of y times mu alpha y. And actually it's really the counting measure. So for example, if you fix an x of dimension alpha, then you can define uh, this, the measure to be uh, uh, this, the size of y over the size of x, and then you take the standard part map. So yeah, this is some yeah this is sometimes called the counting dimension, a counting measure. And um, the other one is called uh, where well, the other family yeah the other family of counting dimensions is called cost dimensions. Um, so fix an internal set X. Um, pseudo finite and uh, it's not in the um, so the size is not in the convex hole of um, um, of the uh, rears and then you can define a convex subgroup c uh, less than alpha to be the uh, non intersection of all uh, non-standard intervals that is between uh, minus alpha over n and alpha over n and then the cost dimension normalized by alpha, uh, delta alpha is defined to be base counting dimension. Um, so actually there is a more intuitive way to define this dimension, uh, but we have to, uh, um, uh, yeah, but we have to restrict to some uh, um, some sets. So we have to be. Uh, uh, so if we don't, so so we we restrict ourselves in the uh, Archimedean component that is generated by alpha. So it's defined as this, and uh, we just. Uh, if we just care about uh, internal sets with size, uh, uh, the log of y is inside C alpha, and the other all other sets we just think them was uh, too big, and they have we assign them a dimension infinite, then we can define delta alpha as a real valued function uh, to be uh, this. So it's um, um, so. The dimension delta alpha of y is defined as the standard part of log rhythm of the size of y over alpha, which is the same as the standard part of the log rhythm of y over the log rhythm of x, and then it will be uh, real valued. And um, yeah, so if you translate to uh, the finite um, cases and then actually uh, x and y has the same cost dimension with respect to alpha if only if uh, so uh, so for every epsilon bigger than zero y is uh, bigger than or equal to uh, the size of y is bigger than or equal to x at the size of x uh, to the power of one minus epsilon, and the same holds for y. Uh, yeah, 
the com yeah the other the other direction also holds so the, uh, at the size of x also bigger than or equal to uh the size of y uh to the power of um, one minus epsilon and um yeah so the cost dimension of uh, with respect to x of y um, where it kind of gets the power roughly gets the power of the size um, so now i will um, restate uh, the uh, motivation uh, the two examples in the motivation that we discussed in terms of uh, the uh, so in the equivalent non-standard version and uh, in terms of the counting dimension we just have defined so okay the sam Reddy's theorem if you do remember the finite reversion is uh, so for every k and delta there is n depends on only k and delta such that every subset of um, this uh, initial segment of the uh, uh, the natural numbers until n and uh, this every subset of this of size uh, delta to times n contains an arithmetic progression of length k and the non-standard version which is equivalent to this finite version is that you if you take an outer power of uh, natural numbers and star and uh, and you take an internal subset uh, okay so you define the internal subset of n star okay i also call it n star where um, to be uh, the actual product of uh, uh, the interval from one to n uh, and then the Samaradi theorem is equivalent to say that any internal set A inside this N satisfying the fine dimension of A is the same as fine dimension of N star. Um, this internal set A will contain an arithmetic progression of length K for any K. Um, in terms of fine dimension, counting measure uh, contain arithmetic progression. Okay. Okay. Uh 什么情况下它会满足它的fine uh Rugoni Chi 
比如说 k 分之 n， 然后你让那个 k 值啊、呃、变大的话，那它就不是一样的 sum fine dimension。虽然我这个例子里面取的很不好了，因为我这个例子里面它它就是一直有任何大的 arithmetic progression， 因为它本来就是一个啊、嗯、对，但是但是这个。它不满足这个条件，就是说他们的 fine dimension 是一样，就 fine dimension 一样，取到 n 平方是不是就错了？对，比如说你这个 n star 取到 n 平方，然后你这个 a 只取到 n 的话，那那他们的 fine dimension 就是不一样的。好吧，谢谢。嗯。嗯，不客气。嗯、um, ，对，就是 fine dimension 一样是一个很、很、很强的条件，它就是那个 big O 呃、uh, notation， 就是我找一下啊，是这个，就说你需要它那个，他们两个 fine dimension 一样是说这个是需要呃是 big O y and y is big O x 这样才可以。所以就是你需要有一个 constant， 然后你可以 bound 他们的，呃，的 size。然后这个 at the China conjecture is， um， so so if you still remember the statement， it says if you have a， so you fix a finite graph H， and then you， uh， and then uh any。Graph uh, that is H-free then contains a clique or independent set of size um, this, and the equivalent non-standard version is so if uh, so still fix this finite graph H, and then you take the outer product of finite H-free graphs. So every each component G n is H-free, so it doesn't contain a H as induced subgraph. Then、um, G has an internal clique or independent set X with、um, the coarse dimension with respect to G of this X is bigger than zero. You want him? Uh, can you go back and look at the cost dimension definition? Yes, can. It's the definition of this. It says that the cost dimension is this. Then here it's g. In our example, it's g. So it's the standard part of the size of a logarithm of size of the internal set over the logarithm of size of g. And the asymptotic um, uh, meaning is this. So, so basically, it bounds、oh, the.、Uh, okay, okay,、oh, okay.、Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. So,、um, we're.、Um, So maybe I should say something about what model theory can say about them.、Uh, I don't think I know a good、uh, model theoretic、uh, proof of Sam Rady theorem, but it is definitely related to、um, uh, something called、uh, Hushovsky stabilizer theorem.、Uh, and he,、uh, the stabilizer theorem says if you have、um, uh, sub Uh, if you have a subgroup, and then uh, uh, and then if you have a set in subset, any subset in this subgroup that has,、um, if you look at the phi dimension of the subset, it's the same as the. Okay, no, no, no. So if you have the phi dimension,、uh, the phi dimension of the subset will not grow if you take the. Power of the set, so you can take x times x and times x, and the fine dimension still doesn't grow. Then、um, uh, he showed that you can find actually、uh, 
subgroup around. Um, and this, yeah, and what he uses is the counting measure of this um, five dimension.就是说所有的 呃，就是如果你直接证的话，用直接用这个graph theory证的话，可能可以证出一个bound，比如说它是这个size Bond, back to finite version, you Jasmine,没有这个帮的话,假设你任意一个,嗯,你都,没有一个帮的话,然后你就可以,take Atom, uh, Chinikov, uh, oh. so, uh, so, so people have um, uh, proved the Adrich Heiner for um, stable graphs. So uh, stable graphs is the graph that the edge relation uh, is stable. And uh, it can, yeah, um, and it can be uh, uh, um, formulated in the sense of uh, it avoids certain uh, graphs as induced subgraph, but it avoids like uh, not only one graph, maybe a family of finite, yeah, a finite family of graphs. And uh, so the edish hannah conjecture for stable graphs is known, and it's it's shown by model theory rests, uh, Schiller and uh, Miliaris first, and then Atom and uh, Atom Tanikov and uh, uh, Sergei Stachenko gave a more uh, direct model theoretic proof of it. And the idea is just using this counting dimension, the cost dimension, and then to compare with some um, other dimension in, in stable theory, like local dimensional stable theory, and then it's pretty direct proof. Okay, uh, okay, we will talk about the last topic about pseudo-finite fields and the pseudo-finite difference fields. So pseudo-finite fields, um, so finite fields are of the form Fpk, where P is a prime and um, uh, so it's characteristic P and uh, the size of the uh, finite field is uh, P to the power of K. And all finite fields are of this form. And there is a theorem back to 1992 uh, says that if you take an atom product of uh, finite fields, then the fine dimensional or definable sets takes discrete value. And actually, uh, so there is an isomorphism eta 
which takes the image of the finite dimension of all definable sets in this pseudo finite field to so it, yeah by definition it lies here right it's an abstract uh, additive group and uh, uh, to to the natural numbers so now you can think of the finite dimension really uh, of these uh, in pseudo finite fields takes uh, natural numbers as values uh, and then it takes uh, the finite dimension of the whole field as one. And moreover, the uh, dimension is definable. So for any formula phi x, y, so you think of x as variable and y as parameters, then um, for any dimension i, then you can look at the set of parameters b that gives the definable set phi uh, defined by phi x b that has phi dimension i. So this set of uh, parameters is definable and, uh, and it's, yeah, it's definable uh, for every i. Um, actually, they proved more. They proved um, every counting dimension mu alpha for, for a counting measure mu alpha for alpha, the final dimension of some definable set is also definable. So the measure is also definable, the, uh, the dimension is definable. And, uh, and actually, the uh, fine dimension here now, in, in the case of ultra product finite fields, really uh, corresponds to uh, the algebraic dimension. So it's the natural dimension. Uh, so it's the maximal, uh, so, the, so the phi dimension of uh, definable set X is just the um, maximal transcendence degree of an element X in X over A. So it says basically in outer product of finite fields, the, uh, all the definable set um, of, um, of the structure, they have very well behaved fine dimension. And, uh, this dim and this dimension actually is the natural algebraic dimension. And, uh, so the last slide, I will talk a little bit about um, a variation yeah, or, a, um, or generalization of uh, finite um, fields. So instead of just look at a finite field, you look at a field, uh, finite field with an automorphism. So difference field is just a field with a distinguished automorphism and um, Finite difference fields are of, uh, we know them, we know they are of this form. So you take a finite field of characteristic P, and then you take the uh, Frobenius map uh, to the power T, uh, where uh, this map is just take an element X to X to the power of T, P to the T. So you take X times X times X times X, or times Hendelbian there. Um, so, so I proved something that is pretty similar to, um, to, yeah, to the finite, yeah, I, yeah, this is not very true. So I proved some version of, um, the dim the, the counting dimension, um, in this structure, uh, which is also, uh, where behaved. Uh, but in this case, the counting dimension is the cost dimension. It's not the fine dimension. So, and also it's uh, for a class of arch product of um, difference fields, a finite difference fields. Uh, so if you look at the arch product of finite difference fields uh, satisfying a KP, so the power is bigger than uh, some function over P, and then you take the arch product, then any structure in this family 
the cost dimension um, delta f uh, on all definable sets will be integer valued. And uh, similarly, delta f is definable. And uh, the statement also holds for, uh, so here it, uh, you take different, uh, so you take the outer product of uh, all the primes. So you, you get a field, in the end you get a field of characteristic zero, but uh, the same also holds for characteristic P. You can take outer product of this form. The only condition, uh, yeah, but uh, you have to make sure that um, Ki is, is bigger, is very, very big compared to Ti. And then the same statement holds. So the, in the outer product, the cost dimension behaves where and uh, it's integer valued and it's definable. And uh, yeah, there is a conjecture that actually this dimension, cost dimension you get is also uh, very uh, well known uh, algebraic dimension that is natural for different fields. Uh, which is called transformal transcendence degree. And uh, yeah, and, and it's, yeah, maybe it's hard to prove. Um, yeah, I should say the conjecture is not known for, so if X is quantifier free, it's still not known. Um, maybe it's not true for all definable sets, but I think it's true for all quantifier free set. And yeah, that's my uh, talk. That's all, and thank you. Email Wenti. What's KP to be two, like we, I, we, we take the ultra product of all F no, squared. No, it's, uh, it's not. Yeah, it so if I take KP to be two, then actually it's uh, it's just the, uh, wait, KP to be two. Yes, then, then is there some funny definable set that like? No, I mean, if KP is two, then it's, uh, Actually, uh, I think it's very nice because okay. uh, because uh, it's I think it's just a pseudo finite field because this um, this uh, this um, automorphism is actually ah uh, yeah yeah, yeah. The automorphism might yeah. be actually definable okay so so yeah yeah okay. so sigma square is I I D so it's definable in a pseudo finite field so the uh, structure actually is better okay that that, that might is, be a yeah. bad bad example but. What I was trying to ask was, so um, yeah, you yeah, take yeah, a so, small enough uh, exponent, yeah. then you get some funny definable set with um, funny guess, cost dimensions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can okay. say the cost dimension is yeah. Where the thing is, actually, if you take small enough kp and uh -huh. make sure if it, uh, the, the, it goes to infinite, if you vary p, yep. then I think the theory it's possible, uh, it's pretty possible that it gets, you get a better theory than what I define. Oh, okay. Yeah, because, um, because uh, uh, the theory that I was considering is very bad because um, uh, okay. you have, uh, so, uh, so uh, yeah, it's, it's a folklore that if you have a pseudo finite field and you have a very small subset, defined mm -hmm. subset, mm -hmm. And then you can uh, you can define every internal subset of this oh, small set okay. uh, uniformly. So okay. you can code everything basically. So okay. the theory is very bad. In, yeah, it's wired. Uh, but if okay, KP is not that big, maybe uh, the theory mm -hmm. is not bad. And I believe for quantified free set, you still have the cost dimension is. Uh, is uh, integer valued and it can mm -hmm. respond to transformer transcendence degree. I, I believe that, but uh, yeah. Oh, okay, thanks.
，还有问题吗？呃、uh, ，I have a question. Is, ah, okay, yeah. Oh, is this theory um, is this theory similar to, or does it behave like uh, like those theories of exponentially closed fields where there's like a really bad part that interprets the integers, but then somehow like the generic type is still stable or not too bad or something? Because it sounds strange that this coarse dimension is always integer valued, but also there's really bad behavior on smaller sets. I guess. Yeah, I think that yeah, the philosophy is actually this. So, so if you look at small sets, uh, so cost dimension zero sets, uh, they are very bad. Um, but uh, if you, but if you, but if you don't look at these small sets, you only look at uh, uh, these uh, um, very costly. So you look at the definable sets very costly. So how, how can you look at it? So you look at a definable set, for example, you look at a, um, yeah, a definable set and then you look at uh, the, or so for example, if you look at type, okay, and then you look at only the quantifier free type of it. And then it's, uh, and then you can look at this quantifier free type in ACFA. And it's a, it's a nice, it's a nice type. Uh, and I want to say that uh, the, yeah, the, the, so in ACFA, the, the type has a transverse degree or like the uh, omega part of the SU rank. That I want to say this really determines the cost dimension back to our uh, different spheres. That's the idea. Um, but if you look at the other, like more than this quantifier free type, then maybe you get something that's very wired, not well behaved. But if you look at um, only costly in terms of cost dimension, then uh, it's okay. It's everything looks like a quantifier free type, quantifier free set, quantifier free type. Is it okay? Yeah, so I think I told you that I proved that it's true for a quantifier free set, but it's, yeah, but yeah, then people find mistake in it and then, yeah, it was a disaster. Now it's a totally open conjecture. Um, um, call Molly rank. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, uh, I can say this. Um, so there is, um, so this question is, is that this dimension and Molly rank have any relation? There is an example, uh, uh, and I like it very much because um, it's a really uh, non-trivial generalization to using this method to to the other area of mathematics. So there's something called El Alex Sabo theorem. Uh, so it says, if you have uh, uh, something uh, in the complex numbers. Uh, some fine, uh, uh, so you have a variety of dimension two uh, lives inside uh, 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 C three, and um, and if you have this variety satisfying some um, property, which means uh, so if you look at these um, uh, the, these variety intersect uh, the boxes. Uh, finite boxes in in in, in C three. So you take uh, elements. So you take Cartesian product of elements uh, of sets of size n, and then you look at uh, x intersect this. If it is always almost um, uh, n square, then Alex Sabo says either you have a 
a cylinder or you have um, um, or you have uh, a, gr a, a group. So this uh, um, variety uh, either it looks like a cylinder or it looks like a group. And uh, um, so um, people use this, okay, people by people, I mean Martin Bayes and uh, uh, Emmanuel Bouillard, they use this to, uh, so they generalize this Alexa ball to arbitrary uh, dimension complex numbers, C to the N. And, um, and the idea is you compare the cost dimension to the Molly rank or to the transcendence degree. And then, and then, um, and then they showed that actually the geometry you can get is projective. So there's an abelian group around. So these varieties uh, is actually, yeah, similar to an abelian group. And this is an example that you compare uh, cost dimension to Molly rank. Dimension, uh, it's not Molly rank, right? That's uh, C rank. Um,是这一页吗？哦，你你肯定要共享屏幕，我没看到。嗯，哎，我已经share，啊，我已经停止share了。啊，OK，我停止share。OK，是这一页吗？还是那个后面那个？后面那个。后面那个motivation。哦，对对对
呃，杨宁莹有个人嘛，用 a r t i p r o d u c t 证明可能会简单一点。呃，杨宁莹有证明是吧？嗯嗯 ，OK OK， 那你能把 slides 发给我们吗？可以可以。OK good good， 我把它放到网上。嗯，挺好。给大家没有问题，那我们谢谢大家，我是 Doctor。嗯，好，今天今天就到这了啊。好。明天见，谢谢，谢谢报告人，拜拜。嗯，报告很清楚。